the whole the whole kind of goal of this is to help um, you know address the age-old question of you know what's my grade, which students are are typically demanding and, and instructors are are delivering, and you know it's it's easy enough to 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 show a grade to a student uh, you know in terms of uh, just clicking a setting in the gradebook tool and 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 there it'll be for a student. Um, but what we're going to look at is you know what happens under the hood and some of the things that you might not be aware of that can happen when when the gradebook tool itself is calculating the course grade. Um, and there are several different things that are going to uh, affect that. You know um, how you organize it, whether it's weighted, whether you're going to use points and percentages, your category settings, item settings, and that sort of thing. Um, in terms of what gets calculated, it's pretty basic. Uh, you know, if you include something in a course grade calculation and you enter score for it, then it's going to count towards a course grade. Uh, this is, you know, probably the easiest part of this, but uh, it, it's it's worth noting because sometimes, um, well, there's some other things to to consider here. Um, so one, as Diego had pointed out, is this idea of a null uh, score, which is no score at all. And no score at all means it's not included in the course grade calculation, even if that item has been set to be included in in course grade. Uh, and this is much different from zero, which of course is a really bad score. And that's the idea behind this set on graded items to zero button, which you should be very careful about using. Because if you click on this button and then follow through and click the next button, you're going to con convert all those null scores to zeros. And that is going to be uh, really bad. Um, as, uh, and, and again, the other thing to keep in mind is if you do use the drop or keep category settings, um, again, even though uh, for particular, you know, for any one particular item, you're going to see something that, you know, you can be able to click. It says enable, uh, you know, enable course uh, uh, you know, uh, including the course calculation, you're still going to be dropping um, particular items for specific students. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, it's not, it, this isn't something that gets applied to everyone um, in the same way, since it's all based on a particular score in a category. Um, and so it, it also means that things are in flux as you're, calc as you're adding and, and scoring items. You know, you keep on scoring, it's going to keep on changing what's kept and what's dropped and whatnot. Um, so, um, we went through this, and I think, uh, yeah, Diego mentioned this, might be, it might be tempting to say it's just the average of all item scores, but as we see, it's the sum of all the earned points for scored items, emphasis on scored, divided by the sum of possible points for, um, the possible points for scored items. So possible points, also maximum points, and if you look in the gray book, it'll be the item value, but um, uh, in this case, we're looking at, uh, you know, 220 points for what's entered uh, for scored items divided by 275 for what's possible. Uh, and that will give you a course grade of 80. Uh, and just to keep in mind too, if you're, uh, one of the ideas behind this webinar was just to give you an idea of what you can do on your own if you want to just kind of check on what Gradebook is doing with your own calculations. So you're going to see a percentage here because it's always going to be based on the 100% um, grade scale. So for instance, you'll get in, you know, a point a point eight for this if you were to divide these numbers, but that works out to 80% on that on that 100 point scale. Um, if you're entering percentages and you're still trying to figure out how things are working, that's still pretty basic because all you have to do is multiply the percentage that you enter by that maximum possible point uh, points for each one. So you'll see this this works out to the exact same. Uh, oops, go back here. This one works out to the exact same uh, as before. Whether it's you know points or, or percentages, it works out the same. Um, so it's going to work pretty much the same thing. It's 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 giving you a percentage of the maximum points that you're um, that you're entering. So all you need to do is just do that initial calculation, percentage of the maximum points for each one, and then add them up and divide them by the, the total maximum points as before. Um, weighted scores. So the thing to remember about weighted scores is that the weight's being applied to the category. So what does that mean and how do you calculate um, that, that weighted contribution? Because that's the best way to look at that, is that each, basically each weighted category is contributing to your course grade and it's contributing according to the weight that it's been given. But what makes it really easy, we talked before about how, you know, you basically want to get, uh, you know, if you're not using a weighted gradebook, you want to do earned points divided by possible points. Uh, so one way to look at it, um, to do this for calculation is just to look at each um, category as, as, a, as a separate gradebook. So you're, we're gonna, in this case, we've got two, two items in the category. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to um, take our earned points and add those, and then we're going to divide that by all of the possible points. And then we're going to take that and we're going to multiply it by the category weight. So in this case, 
um, you know, we're going to get uh, 15 points for this particular category. And if you want to figure out your total course grade and how it's calculated with the weighted gra gra uh, grade book, then again, it's the same thing. We're just going to take and we're going to add that weighted contribution of each category that we just looked at. So for instance, uh, you might have a category set up like this and you've got students who are going to earn the following points for each category. So if you add all those points, that's how you're going to get your course grade. The, probably the key thing to remember about using unweighted, uh, an unweighted gradebook and the one thing if you could take away from this, this webinar is the idea of course grade to date and the idea that um, weighted scores are going to, are potentially going to fluctuate until you have scored everything. So what's that mean? Well, what happens to the gradebook if some of the categories have no scored items? In this case, for instance, let's say we've got we've scored some items in homework and we've scored some items in quizzes, but we haven't scored any items in the test category. Uh, what is going to happen under the hood and behind the scenes with the gradebook tool is the weight of that test category is going to be ignored. This is really important. And what's going to happen in this case, it's going to increase the weights of the other categories um, in, in, you know, in that uh, a ratio to themselves so that it stays that same ratio, in this case 30 to 20. So what's going to happen here is that 20% category is going to increase to 40% and that 60% category is going, and that 30% category is going to increase to 60% because the grade book always wants to have 100% um, for, uh, for, a weighted, uh, for a weighted grade book. It always wants that 100% because it really can't function without that. So it's going to do this on its own. When it sees there are no scored items in the category, it's just going to ignore it and it's going to adjust the other categories appropriately. So what's that mean? Well, in this case, what that could mean is that a student might um, have done pretty good on some uh, items in homework and quizzes, and it looks really great on their course grade if they're seeing the course grade because, you know, homework is now worth 40% and maybe did particularly well on some quizzes, and now that's worth 60%. But then the minute uh, that person gets a score in a midterm, say, for the test, the test category, well, now maybe, and also maybe that student didn't do so well, so now that um, is going to decrease the weights of those um, items in the category, the homework and quizzes category, and they're going to be worth a lot less, and it's going to be a, a, a might be a dramatically different course grade. And so that's the important thing to remember when you're using weighted categories: that during the semester, a category's weight and therefore its weighted contribution to the course grade may change. So let's talk about extra credit. I know that um, Brian, and I think he did, a, uh, did the work on this to have this in Sakai 10, which Brian, I thank you for, and we talked about this a bit. But we're going to talk about extra credit for a minute here. Um, so uh, one thing about, uh, in this case, what, what, what does extra credit mean? Well, you can already kind of do extra credit in Gradebook because if you want, you can just add more points to uh, uh, beyond the maximum. You know, let's say you have a uh, uh, item worth 50 points and you add 60 or 70. So that's a way of adding more points and, and, and you know, kind of driving up um, the course grade. Um, but in that case, what you're still doing is you're still tied to that idea of the sum of the earned points divided by the sum of the possible points. And this new extra credit that you'll see in Sakai 10 works differently than that. That's not how you calculate things. As a matter of fact, when you're using this extra credit, let's say you just have an extra credit item somewhere, um, uh, all you, that ex, the total possible points for the extra credit, that's just the total number of points that you can add. That's all that is. Um, so the important, uh, well, so here, the important consideration, as we'll see, is that um, uh, the extra credit that you add with this new system might shrink. How could that be? Um, it's kind of sad news for a student. The, the reason has to do with how extra credit is calculated. Because in this case, extra credit is calculated by the earned extra credit points divided by the number of scored items equals extra credit contribution. So in other words, as you score more items, the extra credit decreases. So that's just something to keep in mind in terms of when you're going to add extra credit and when you're going to display your course grade, because that is going to happen. And now we also consider how extra credit is used in a weighted gradebook, and there's actually two different ways to do this. 
Uh, and apologies, uh, Brian, if I'm kind of covering some old old ground here, but uh, I'll just, I think you were talking about this at the beginning, but I'll just keep on going. Uh, so one approach is to add an extra credit item to a regular category. And you'll see right here, and it'll say extra credit in the gradebook tool to let you know. So how does that work? Well, the earned extra credit is added to that category uh, grade. Remember we talked about that. You can consider a category just to have like its own grade. So in this case, it's going to be added to, um, you know, that, that category grade before it gets multiplied by the category weight. So in this case, we've got this extra credit. It's going to get added to that, um, that category grade that we have here. And that category grade is going to get uh, multiplied by the category weight, and that's going to be the weighted contribution. But there's a couple things to keep in mind that same scenario is going to come into play in terms of extra credit shrinking as more items in the category are scored. So in other words, let's say that we had two more items in this category. Um, that means that say it's 20, you've got, uh, you know, uh, you, you put 20 points in here as this one is here. The way that's going to work is it's going to be um, 20 points divided by the two scored items. So it's going to be, it's going to be 10 points. Um, if you score two more items in this category, if you had two more items and you score two more of them, it's going to be 20 divided by 4. So it's only going to be 5 points. So again, that um, extra credit can decrease. But the other important thing to remember, too, is that category weight may change if other categories don't have scored items and then you score those items. So depending upon whether all the categories have scored items and that changes, that's going to be the multiplier for any kind of extra credit that you put into that category. So that's something to keep in mind, too. Uh, approach number two is adding an extra credit category. It's something else you can do. Now, in this case, you'll notice when you do this that it's a little special because that weight that you provide for that category isn't part of the um, of the weighting scheme. You'll see that when you add it. Like, you know, you can add, you can put as many, you know, as much of a weight for this category as you want, but as soon as you select extra credit, the tool is not going to say that you're you know, your, weight, your, your weights are off or anything like that because it's not considering it to be part of that scheme. But in terms of how it delivers that extra credit, it works the same as, um, as any other category. So that means that the category's weighted contribution equals its extra credit. And we've already talked about how that weighted contribution works, which would be the sum of the um, earned points divided by the sum of the possible points times the category weight. Um, and that's how you would get the extra credit that you would contribute to your course grade in this case. But there is uh, one scenario that I know I talked uh, uh, briefly with uh, Brian about this that you might want to be uh, particularly careful of. And that's the idea of adding an extra credit category and then putting some items in the extra credit category and then enabling them to be extra credit as well. Um, you want to be really careful about that because basically what you're doing is putting extra credit on top of extra credit, and that might be a massive amount of extra credit. So you probably, you know, unless you're thinking that you want to do things that way, then probably is going to get a little complicated, so I probably recommend not doing that. You just want to stick with either putting an extra credit item in a non-extra credit category or using an extra credit category and just, you know, don't enable that extra credit setting. Um, so, as an instructor, what are some things that you can do in terms of how you kind of mitigate or negotiate the different things that can happen in your gradebook? Uh, well, one thing you can do is, uh, especially, this is, doesn't just have to be for weighted gradebook, but especially for weighted gradebook, decide when you want to display the course grade. Uh, you know, in some cases, you might want to wait until you've got some kind of a scored item in every single category so that you know that your grading scheme is the way that you, uh, you know, the way you want it, and it's not kind of doing behind-the-scenes adjustments. Uh, you know, wait until then to display the course grade. Um, decide how and when to add your extra credit. Uh, since there are some fluctuations that are going to be there as well. And um, finally, just be real careful about that, uh, that you know, setting the um, ungraded items to zero because that can definitely be, um, you know, uh, as we had said, uh, no, no score means uh, not really even acknowledged by the gradebook. Uh, a zero just means a really bad score. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, okay. Uh, apologies to everybody. I, I know I, I ripped through this in, um, uh, in record time. 
um, and we're at the top of the hour here. Um, for anybody, I'm, I'm fine with hanging around. So Brian, I'm not sure if there are uh, any questions from anyone, but I, I'd be happy to take questions. Yeah, I can go ahead and go through the questions real quick. Uh, top one is how to hide categories from all grades table. Oh, how to hide it from the all grades table. I'm not sure if that's possible. Um, I mean, there's a, I mean, I just add two cents on this. I mean, there's a okay. feature where you can hide um, categories, not categories, items, I guess. Um, right. And the all grades feature, but it really doesn't adjust the score or anything. It just kind of cleans up the UI. Uh, so on the category level, there's really no feature for that. And, and one thing I did discover, which I, I think is kind of a is kind of a design a kind of a design glitch, and you'll see, you actually see a message for this in the gradebook. But if you you can create a category and just not put a weight in it, and in that case, um, the thing to remember is is that even if you you know you put items in there, even if you select include in course grade calculation, um, uh, they won't get they won't get, get included. So I guess that could, in certain uh, uh, use cases, be helpful. I suppose um, you know the items won't show up within a parentheses around them, you know, which you typically indicates they're not included in course grade, but they still won't be included in course grade. Uh, but I think even then, I don't think for that question it's going to make a difference because as a student, you're still going to see that category. So I don't think there's a way to you know hide uh, a category. Um, you can only uh, I think it would be a great uh, might be. Uh, uh, something to consider for our and for the gradebook enhancements, but it, mm -hmm. I think it would be good to have a setting that could just say um, per category could say hide the whole thing, right? You just don't want to, you know, don't and, you know, just yeah, don't. Really actually, I that. set in to uh, the gradebook enhancements, and they do have an easier way to hide uh, categories, so that should be coming for that. Um, so the next question is, what well, I think you already addressed this. What happens to the final grade calculation if you add extra credit gradebook? item to a extra credit category. So the item inside of a category issue. Right. And so it's just, I think, and, and, you know, Brian, you you had, you know, mentioned this as, as something that definitely, you know, as a, as a caution, because what's going to happen then is you're just, you know, you're, uh, that extra credit item is going to do what it does. And then the extra credit category is going to do what it does. And that's just going to lead to a lot of extra credit. Okay. Potentially. Yeah. And another question is, is there a way to trick the gradebook into calculating an accurate course grade throughout the semester? Well, if I'm not sure if that means, if you mean, uh, I'm not sure if that means with a weighted category. I'm assuming it probably does. Yeah, I would think so. Um, yeah. Um, no. I, as far as I know, there isn't. And for anyone who's used... Um, and I, I should say um, I've been uh, I've been involved with the gradebook enhancements uh, uh, project, and one of the th and I've I've had a lot of experience with gradebook too. So it's been kind of really neat because I've really kind of dived deeply into both of the different tools and how they do things and how they're the same and they're different and how they're compared to other tools and say uh, Desire to Learn and Canvas. Um, and one thing I can tell you about both gradebook two and, and gradebook one is. They both do the same thing when it comes to categories, and what I think, you know, I think hopefully you sh you'll we'll see this in the gradebook enhancements. But I think what would be helpful is just some visual indicator, at least, to tell you that a category isn't getting included in the course grade. But it's important to remember that you're talking about like how can I have an accurate course grade? It's always accurate. The, the problem is it's not accurate to the grading scheme or the weighting scheme that you're seeing. That, that's the problem. You know, if you've set up a bunch of categories to have different weights, um, you know, I mean, it's not as if it's not an accurate course grade. It's just that the system is ignoring, you know, it's doing all this business behind the scenes and it's not letting you know. Um, so perhaps the best thing is just from a design standpoint is to let you know. I don't think there's a way around it because if you think about it, you can't, I think it's, and again, um, I'm not sure if this is true, but I think it's, Kind of mathematically impossible to have a weighted um, a weighting scheme that works off of less than 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 100 percent. That that's that's the issue here. So that's that's what the tool needs to do. So as soon as it sees no score in a in a particular category, it says, "Well, wait a minute. We can't use that. We can't use that weighted category. There's nothing in it. So what are we going to do? Because it has to equal 100. So I think that's the 
that's the problem. But unfortunately, no. So the short answer is no. <laughs> There's no way to trick the tool into doing that. And that was the last question. Oh, okay. If there's any more, you can hurry up and post one. If not, uh, we can wrap this up. Yeah. Okay. No more questions. Okay, then. Okay, well, thanks, everyone. Uh, and thank you, Brian. And thank you, Diego, as well. Thank you, yeah. thank you. Thank you for saving me in the middle of the presentation. You were doing fantastic, Diego. And sorry <laughs> if I if 